The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of the Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. When Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me, they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant of earth, to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, who has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Gazan, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and, that, and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that is my, it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. And then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. While Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Christ's lamb, he worship and 
Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, as she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. So then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the daughter was healed instantly. The word of the Lord.
I told this story some years ago at Grace, and I'm gonna tell it again today with a little bit of a different spin. I like this story because it reaches into the past, it fits in the present of today, and it also looks into the future, which is gonna be something new for me, and perhaps for some of you as well. And I just basically love this story. So some years ago, I hired Luke Novotny, and I think many of you will remember the Novotny family, to help me in the garden. He was an all-star weed puller and tractor driver. And everything went well, well until we were at the mulch pile and I was using a pitchfork to put mulch in the wagon. And all of a sudden, I was stung right between the eyes. I told Luke I was going inside because I had been stung. And I barely got in the house when Luke came racing to the door. He outran 43 bees. Unfortunately, he had been chased by 50. We both tended to our stings and decided we had enough gardening for the day. <clears throat> and after a wait of a safe amount of time, I went back to the mulch pile to retrieve the tractor and the tools. And I saw a large round globe that had been buried in the pile. On the outside, it looked like a melon. And on the inside, like an apartment building different floors and hallways, and many bees coming and going. I hoped they wouldn't recognize me. But with my pitchfork, I had knocked off unintentionally the front of their house. And when I was telling this story, I heard myself say these words out loud. I was stung right between the eyes. Now, I like to think about synchronicity and about the imagery of things, and so I thought about those words as a figure of speech right between the eyes seemed pretty obvious to me. It's kind of like getting hit over the head with a two by four. So I played with that. What is right in front of my face? What am I not seeing? What do I need to see? Not seeing it hurt. Am I paying attention? What might I harm by not paying attention? And sometimes things we need to see are hidden just beneath the surface. After having read the Genesis passage for today, I couldn't help but wonder what Joseph's brothers must have felt like. They got hit, in a sense, right between the eyes. I'm your brother whom you sold into slavery. And in Matthew, Peter asked Jesus to explain the parable. And in a sense, Jesus hits him right between the eyes. What is wrong with you? Can you still not understand what I am saying? Well, things are not always what they seem, one of my favorite themes. And it looked like Joseph was sold into slavery, but he was really where God needed him to be. And the dietary laws seem to have it backwards. It's not what goes into the mouth, but what comes out. What comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what can get us into trouble. A paradox has been introduced. All throughout the Gospels, Jesus presents the stories where things are the opposite of what we expect. They don't make sense based on what we know and certainly not on what the apostles knew. Like the Canaanite woman, get rid of her. She is not from the house of Israel, but that was okay because she had faith. And one of the most paradoxical of all, one that's not in today's scriptures, those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, my sake will find it. The stakes here in the Jesus stories are pretty big. They are bigger than just the life of the body. They are about the life of the soul as well. We know all about the soul, which in the Greek is translated, there's a vital force which animates life and shows itself in breathing. Author Thomas More in his New York Times bestseller, Care of the Soul, Define soul as not a thing, but a quality or a dimension of experiencing life and ourselves. It has to do with depth, value, relatedness, heart, and personal substance. Soul is the spiritual life and the psychological life of the body, which ultimately affects every part of the body in its relationship with itself and others. Soul is the genuine you. The issues Jesus puts before us are about opening mind and heart to what lies beneath, what lies hidden. I think it's important to pause and remember things are not always what they seem. Sometimes a mulch pile 
is not just a mulch pile. It might be someone's home. So maybe we can see this in a different way, a broader sense. If soul is breath, is life, maybe we could ask, what is it that takes our breath away? What is it that animates us and gives us life? Where do we put our energy these days? Sometimes our answers are anger and disgust and aggression, maybe jealousy, sadness, despair, road rage, indestructive behaviors and habits. <clears throat> so maybe Jesus is asking us to lose those kinds of things and to take up the mysteries of the unknown, the magic of joy and peace and gratitude. Sometimes those are actually harder to do. Jesus asks, what will we give in return for our life? What can we give that will buy our soul, our true self back? I kind of like the thought that the answer to that question might be joy and laughter, humor and community, kindness and compassion. Amen. And one more thing. I had two choices about how to deal with those bees. A can of Raid was one choice. I went out there and apologized to the bees for destroying their home. What was the last thing that hit you between the eyes? Did you kill the messenger? And the next time you get right hit right between the eyes, what is it that you will be looking at? Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now turn to the prayers of our community, prayers for healing and body, mind, and spirit for those who have died and all the blessings of this life especially Susan Walker, Mary Wilson, Ed Bloom, Mary George, Amanda Ochter, 
Amy Ferrari, Ben Brownsey, E.D. Montgomery, and John Riley. We pray for all unemployed and their families and all victims and those affected by the coronavirus. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the churches of Trinity High Park, Church of the Holy Spirit, Lake Forest, Holy Family and Sagrada Familia, Lake Villa, St. Lawrence Libertyville, and St. Paul's McHenry. We pray for all expectant parents in our midst, especially Ryan and Amira Martinson, Ashley and Andy Gates, Ryan and Desiree Jessen, and Benjamin and Rachel Woods. Pray for all those serving in the military, especially Jamie Sargent, Dean Redman, and Luke Hedrick. We give thanks for all those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Karen Zeke, Claire Gardella, Michael Demecki, Theodore Barton, and Paula Jemek Woods. We celebrate all the blessings of this life, but especially the wedding anniversary of Dave and Debbie Poole, the wedding anniversary of Bill Valentine and Barb Plants, and the wedding anniversary of Ken and Lori Hermanson. And we give thanks for the ministry of Rita Travis. For whom else shall we pray?
Let us say together the words of the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. second time, which is rather unexpected in my life and very bittersweet, I need to leave you with a special blessing. And of course, it's a Franciscan blessing. And so may God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness 
to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God be upon you and all you love and pray for this day forevermore. Amen. Thank you.